The next piece on the agenda is I uh, welcome Carrie Matlock from DLA, our architect. And uh, Carrie is the lead architect for the district, and she also uh, is our contact. And she coordinated and ass assisted her team in the life safety report and the facility assessment. Uh, the board approved this uh, last spring to hire DLA to do this. This project uh, was not was also not only the part of the 10-year life annual life safety report that's required by the state, but then we also had Carrie um, for an additional part of the the fee we paid them put together a facility assessment plan, and that giant binder that you see on the table by Carrie is what was comprised. Um, we are not going to go through the entire binder tonight. The facilities council and myself has Carrie to provide a summary report to the board both on the life safety and the facility assessment. Um, after tonight's presentation, um, we're working to coordinate a date for a public facilities board facilities committee meeting that would be chaired by John Keene and Tim Walsh. And that would allow the board, as well as anybody from the public, to come and just spend time on the life safety and the facility assessment plan. One thing that we, uh, Carrie will try to prioritize for us to work and the different things. The thing that, um, as we went through this a couple times with the facilities council, that is important to remember when you do when you look at this report, it's it's two in one documents. The life safety items are things that are life safety items that would be recognized by the state. The facility assessment goes hand in hand. A, a quick example of that is. Um, uh, one example of that would be like with our our uh, stadium. We know that uh, there's some issues with our seating, our bleachers, the concrete structure, and some of those things. Um, so that would be identified as a life safety project. There's some repairs though that if you're going to have those people out there and be spending that money on that type of facility, that's one of the first facilities that always floods for us whenever there's a heavy rain and causes the turf to rise up and things to float on the track and we've had you know multiple pieces of equipment room so there's some things then that Carrie puts in the facility assessment that the board should consider while you're doing this life safety project you should probably under capital improvements think about fixing or addressing flooding so it's hard sometimes to keep the two separate because only one's really a life safety item and maybe if it gets approved by the state is something we would have to address within the next five to ten years the capital improvement is something that if we want to do things the right way it's something that we should look at in congruence with doing the life safety improvement so that the project uh, is efficient and can last a long time. I think another example we discussed that might even be easier for people to understand is some of the roof needs to be repaired under the life safety, right? Correct. Some's three to five, some's five to ten, but you might decide when you send it off for a bit if you do more of it or all of it at one time you could possibly get a significant discount than doing it in three different uh, projects over a you know three, five, or seven year period. So that that was another example that Carrie offered. Okay. Floor's yours, Carrie. Okay, well that's a, that's a great way to start. It is very important to understand those two the two differences between the two, and I'll and I'll work to talk to that as we move through. What you received in your board packet was a consolidated version of this. And then what I'm going to walk you through tonight is even more consolidated of that. So this is really kind of just the reader's digest of, of everything. Well, what we have um, done to date is that we've had assembled a team of about 10 people, 10 engineers and architects that walk through your facilities. And um, this was part of that process, right, the, the facility assessment and the life safety survey. The life safety survey was required by the state of Illinois. It's to be done every 10 years. and that those items that we were looking at we were able to form a synergy by looking at the rest of your building at the same time do some cost savings there by having the team out that was going to look at the same kind of items um, the walls the doors the floors the ceilings every component of your building top-down <coughs> assessment we're just looking for code issues with life safety versus the facility assessment the facility assessment and I'll get into those differences and show you some examples in a minute but really the purpose of this was to comply with the state requirements, identify systems and assemblies which require replacement, 
And really, this is a living document and to be used as a planning tool for your district. And that's really important. I would encourage all of our clients to do this, especially when they're looking at their life safety, because as you know, and as you've probably seen, the life safety list gets a little bit long and it, it is a little bit overwhelming. Um, but it's better to be overwhelmed all at once and take a look at all of the items at your district uh, before you go and embark uh, upon a project to enjoy some of those synergies like uh, Tim already mentioned and economies of scale. So just with that, that's really why we encourage our clients to do it and, and so that you can help to prioritize. When you're, when you're selecting to do a project now as you move forward, you're going to have an idea of what the district might need to spend. Now, I'm not saying that this is everything that you have to do in the course of the next 10 years, but it is a good perspective for you to take advantage and understand that this may be an amount, it may be close, it's a district decision, obviously, but you're not walking into this situation blindfolded, so you really understand everything that's going on in your building. And it really gave us a good chance to kind of organize the data that you had. Uh, coming into your district new uh, and, and really coming from the the major undertaking that you did with the $60 million, uh, I don't know exact figure, but you did a lot of construction. And all of those documents, uh, the drawings, we worked together with Joel to try and gather them in an organized fashion. And now we have them at your disposal and at our disposal. So when we talk to your administration and get questions as we move forward with the relationship, we can now use this as a nice tool, planning tool for each other. And it's, it's, it's really easy. And Joel is already enjoying the spreadsheet that we've put together by uh, and getting a handle on kind of work orders and things with that. So what we did was we did this top-down review, uh, architects, engineers, and we also interviewed staff. Then we went through and categorized it. This is just a rationale. Operations and maintenance, capital improvement projects, and life safety. And I've kind of given some hints as to what those projects might entail. And really operations and maintenance, we can divide this up in, in a number of ways, but this seems to make a lot of sense for uh, public school districts. Operations and maintenance really comes down to more of a door hardware issue. That's the door handle and the closers, and, um, and, and if the door is just kind of aesthetically looks a little bad, so that we, we put it on a list to be replaced. Flooring, ceiling tiles, I know you've been through the building and you've done a lot of great work here, uh, but still there's still things that are untouched or have been touched and are seeing signs of aging or there's an issue with them, and I'll, get, and I'll show you some examples. And then there's probably mechanical equipment that wasn't touched that, that go around because it was in an okay condition and then eventually it's going to be uh, replaced. The capital improvement projects, this would be some things more of, you know, the optional things that your district might want to make improvements upon, like the track resurfacing. Even though that's kind of a maintenance thing that goes on, you have to do it typically every eight years. Uh, there's this also the synthetic turf replacement. That doesn't last a lifetime. It does expire, and that would uh, need to take place over the course of the next few years for your district. And then uh, the option to deal with parking, if there's a concern for what you're doing here, what you have currently, if there would be an expansion that you would like to do sometime in the future, that would fall under that category. And then obviously the life safety is a big chunk of, of this dollar amount, and it is uh, fire-rated enclosures. This is what life safety boils down to. It all comes down to fire issues. So what, what prevents a fire? Um, how can we protect student safety by looking at fire-rated doors? And then also in that is the building envelope because it's important for water to not infiltrate the building. It would cause mold issues and then a safety concern as well. So roofing then would be incorporated into that. Tuck, pay, tuck pointing would be incorporated into that. Anything to protect the building to keep it dry and uh, not have that condition existing. And then bleachers in the stadium building, uh, you can obviously tell if people are climbing on a, a bleacher, you want that safe and so that there is, are no issues with um, and potential hazards. So that's just kind of some key components. There are more items, as you noticed in the, in the, the, the document that you received, but this gives you kind of a quick overview. And then we broke that into priorities. And the facility assessment portion is broken into one, two, and three priorities. And you can see the years that uh, relate to those priorities. And then the life safety, this is the difference. The life safety is required by law to be broken into ABC priorities. And an A priority has to be completed within one year. 
a B priority in five, and then the C is you have your option for the, the remaining 10 years to do it. I want to show you some examples of what we saw. Okay, This is outside of your stadium building, the large stadium building, the home bleachers. That's the uh, asphalt where it meets some of the concrete. So you can see it's cracked and pitted and needs to be replaced. Uh, unfortunately, I'm only going to show you the the bad pictures because those are the things that I'm writing up. Your facility's in great shape. I, you know, you're, you're, you're doing a really good job of maintaining it. It's just these are main maintenance items that come along that you just have to do. Um, and those are the bleacher floorboards on the visitor side. And as you can see, if you can't see too closely, they're wood and they are um, giving a little bit and there's separation between some areas. So someone could step through. It's not the safest condition. It, sh it should be addressed. Also compliance, right? The, the, the amount of space between the sitting part and the foot parts. Right. Way out of compliance. Yes, and they're open beneath. and No like aisles. To, yes, and there's no aisles and there's no handrails and, and the fences around the perimeter is, is, is pulled away. This is your, uh, the stadium building. And you can see that, again, on the left, it's a little hard with the lighting, but it is, it is uh, kind of pitted, and that's a tripping hazard. And that's where people traverse on, on, that, on that structure. And then inside is exposed rebar. The concrete is pulled away from the structure and is exposing that rebar, and that's not good, so we want to correct that. And what we've put together in, in the report is a detailed analysis of this building that shows the repair costs. So you'll see the cost associated with that building. And, that, oops. and this is the roof, uh, that gentleman's hand, that's uh, one of my colleagues, and there's a tear in the membrane. Now when we walk through the facility, we did see there were a number of uh, tiles that had been stained or, or wet because there are some leaks in your facility right now. Mike, can you shut the light on? Thank you. Sorry, Carrie. Yeah, no problem. This might help with uh, yeah, that's a little bit better. Yeah. And then the, the scupper detail on the left, there is uh, some limestone coping below it that has some uh, moss growing on it, and the joints have been uh, deteriorated, so uh, water is being allowed to infiltrate within. And this is some tuck point, and this is on the roof as well. And you, on the right, it may be a little hard to see, but the concrete underneath the fascia detail is pulling away from the, the rebar. These are not things that you notice on a regular basis from your facility. They're in the hidden crevices. This is, a lot of this is on the roof. No one is seeing this on a, a regular basis, and you wouldn't see this detail unless you looked up underneath one of the, the fascias. It's very typical. It's not unusual. It, um, it's just something that needs to be addressed, and you need to get it on a, a maintenance plan. Is that an area that had been touched in the renovation, or is that an original? It is an original. Okay. So. Yes, unfortunately, I you know not every portion of the building was touched. Right. And then there are some of the tile issues that are noted in the report as well. Uh, you know, your building has been built on different additions at different times, and so the buildings move, and they move not together. So sometimes uh, if the detail is, the expansion detail needs to be a little bit larger so that it can accommodate that. And I know Joel's working with his staff to change those as they come about. And, um, but it's, it's kind of a hazard of an older structure, especially that has wood underneath it. So then this comes to the point where we sum up all of those line items. And just to give you an indication, there were over a thousand of them. So the data that we're mining here is pretty extensive. And manipulating it, this is kind of a, a nice snapshot for you to kind of break it down and say, all right, I've broken into these three categories, capital improvements, you know, those line items I talked about, the life safety, and then O&M. And of those items, they all added up to about 14 million, and then we deducted 1.9 because those were things that Joel and I talked about, the fact that he could probably already, he's already has it on work orders to do and he's doing in-house. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, some of the items would be typical of what we do in our, in the sort of our regular operations. So that's, that's where those uh, fall into that category. So then we tallied that, which gave us the 12.37. And Kerry, can I ask one question? Do you agree with them that they could do that 1.9? Oh, absolutely. There's it's painting and you know the yeah. tile. And probably so they did this the the survey in 
April. Uh, March or, or March, spring April. break. So, and, and there's probably at least 100 that we get over the course of a typical summer anyway, so. Okay. Yeah. You know, we had a long conversation on this at uh, Kevin's meeting, Matt, and you know, two things. One is complimented both, but this time, Joel, because he did go through every thousand items to try to figure out what could be absorbed in our normal budget. And if you consider it a 10-year plan in essence, right, Carrie? Yes. So if you're looking at, you're talking about $200,000 a year out of the roughly $1.1 million that we pay to Aramark a year. So there is a question, like, you know, when we get farther into needs versus wants and how you're going to pay for it and what budget it's in. But uh, for some of the other items, but Joel, we pushed him a little. We said, are you pretty confident that that amount of work Two hundred thousand dollars a year is work you would have been doing anyway, and he felt it was. So then we added a contingency on uh, to this, and and obviously um, at the time when you execute the work, you'll need to pay for architectural and engineering fees associated with to do drawings for the associated work. So that's in there as well. Uh, that's as if you were to do this as a global package today, and obviously that's not going to take place, but. What we wanted to do is give you a snapshot of where, where we're at. And it's just like it was a snapshot of what it was like when we walked through in the spring, and now even though things are changed and there's items on this list. That's why it's a living document. We're never going to keep up to date 100%, but we can con you know, constantly update it and make sure that everyone's on the same page, which is the great part of the, of the tool. Anyway, this is, does not include inflation for the up and coming years. So if we were to do something down the road, five years as opposed to you know next year or, or this year, then keep in mind that those numbers would need to be have some inflation factors because we don't know what's going to happen with the economy and, and our government. So. <laughs> uh, Can and, you go back to that real sure, quick? Sure. Just, just once again so that I don't have anybody passing out on the floor and I don't have to get the AED. <laughs> Okay, this is just a, this is a cumulative snapshot um, of both the facility assessment and life safety. There's projects that are built in there that we might not ever do, or we might not ever choose to do in the next 10 years. Um, you know, there, there's there's money in there to possibly work with the zoo on a parking arrangement. If that never happens, or um, you know, new trophy cases and and and. We're, there's some things in there that, you know, big ticket items that if you took out this thing, the, the, the grand total could be cut by $2 million, you know, pretty quickly. Or, you know, once we start phasing this in, we would realize, you know, these are things that are going to either be past 10 years or maybe on a, a wants list. So I, I just want to, you know, every once in a while remind the board, because I know we, when we see money like that, we, we right away get worried that, well, wait, we only got 8.9 in it refund and we have other things we need to do and technology and just a snapshot. I, I do have a question regarding life safety. Mm -hmm. That's what, seven million, I round up. Sure. You have priority A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. Now, doesn't it put the onus on us now to react to one of those priorities immediately? It does. Uh, that's $65,000. That's the, it? Yes. How do we and then what's, what's, what are those requirements? The A, B, and C. One the, A, whipped. the A is a within in, a year. Within a year. B is within five years. And how much is that? And the, that is the bulk of it. That's six point eight million. And most of that is the stadium. Uh, there's uh, the stadium makes up one point six of that. There are the one point six. The, the roofs, roofs make up an, another large chunk of that, and. Um, the, the bleachers as well. Those are the big tickets. Yeah, I mean the stadium. That's yeah. why it was the bleachers, the, the drainage. Tennis court. Roofs. Tennis courts in there. The tennis courts right now are just located in the capital improvement. And, okay. And we could, because it, it's kind of half and half, depending on where you want to, what you want to do with the, uh, the tennis courts. And then how many years is that? Do we have to react to that? You said five right? years. Five, five years. years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And no one is really policing that, but that is the, that is what the state requires. But a B can move to an A. Am I right? Uh, uh, over the you can, course of you time. You can execute them as if No, but what I mean, like. over a course of time where we have it as a B now or even a C, that could keep on moving up as it's aged and... Well, nothing could move yeah. to an A because an A is once the life safety report's approved by the state, you have a year from that point. Okay. So those, the A's are really the only things that are... I think Matt was asking a different way. If it's a year, if it's a B that we're thinking we're doing in year two, does it become an A? 
after the first year is up under the rules of the life safety. No. Is that kind of what you're no. asking? Well, yes, yeah, because what I'm asking right now is what you're saying right now, A, you got to get done within a year. Yes. B, you got to get with, done within five years. Correct. In that five year with the Bs, is there ever a chance where it deteriorates where it moves to it? So that's an know? emergency situation? Well, or just like in the B ranking, is there rankings that move it? that show projects closer to A, or they're always in all in B? No, they just categorize it in A, B, C, okay. and they, they stay there. Uh, how quickly you want to execute those is up to you, though. But what you're lock, being locked into is the is the five-year, technically. Technically, it's 10 years, because that's when you're required to do a but new survey. But in that B situation, you would work with the board to prioritize those B projects, then? Absolutely. The next step for this would be to understand um, the synergies between the projects and the district's priorities. So what we would do from here is meet again to discuss, um, this is not, this, this project would be then be complete. This would be uh, move into implementation, which when then we would work with you to develop a phasing plan with your priorities so that you could understand and um, receive some of the synergies that, that were discussed in the economy of, of scale. So we would partner projects that make sense to, to go together from a construction standpoint. Good. But certainly the majority of <clears throat> the work and including the life safety deals with the parts of the building that we didn't address during the prior construction. Yeah, it's absolutely. across the street in the rough, the, mm -hmm. the great majority of it. So it's the part that the continued right. to just mm -hmm. age without having any work done in the prior construction. Period, yes. right that's a great that's a great point because you'll have you will have some community members that when they see this or see that we're spending money on these projects will say well what, you just did a 66 million dollar project in 2008 2009 but these are all items that were not addressed that's correct Carrie by us putting these a B and C's on there does that open us up to litigation if people get hurt because it's listed on life safety no it, it's just a it's just a priority that the state requires it's a, it's a, basically my interpretation of what your, what the status of your building is right now. Okay. In the documents we have, do we have a listing for the six point nine million dollars? Yes. What page would that be on? You know, Mike. There's one thing is purposely suggested a high level because this is the whole report, and she's given us the high level now. And the thought was, when we have the facilities committee meeting on that that she would go into full detail on any questions people have. But there's the, still the high level is in, it, it's a series of pages actually, Mike, on here. If you go to. Uh, you, have, you have it around. Um, so Tim, where is 18, 19. It starts on page uh, 20, Mike. 20 of Carrie's presentation, of, attachment. And it goes to uh, page 26. It's more of the next kind of level of detail from the numbers she's having. I'm sorry, Laura, what were you going to ask? Were, were you going to post that then? Is that what you're suggesting? Well, or? they're figuring out how to do it because of the size. I don't know if you figured so out how. So I'll ask my question another way. Okay. Were we provided anything in our board book that shows me what the $6.9 million is? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so what the page? Board. What well, page? That, that's the separate life safety report that's farther down on the agenda. You have two, Mike. And, uh, okay, and I, when I looked there, there I didn't see a six point nine million. Oh yeah, look at the bottom, the last page of it. It's broken down by those priorities. Yeah. And yes. uh, if you're looking at board book, I think it's thirty. No, uh, it's uh, actually it keeps going. Look at page seventeen of seventeen on the violation of recommendations. Gosh darn. Now, if you go to page, I, I don't put this new inserts, but it was 141 of the original board package. Okay. There's two summaries at the bottom. So those 17 pages of big spreadsheets are. I'm sorry, you said 17 to 17, but I was you wanted. It is the page, uh, but Ed has a hard copy. So on on, pa on page 141 of the original board package, we got it. I don't know if it changed. So those 17 There's two pages summaries. of spreadsheets is the Yeah, that's the detail for the life safety, Mike. Okay. That's what we're having the first read on tonight to discuss at a future meeting. 
Okay. And then do we have a, a breakdown for the other two big numbers there? In, um, in what we were provided as board? Not yes. broke, not in that way, though, is it? Is it by capital and not? Uh, I'm confused, because, Mike, if you, look at, if you look at the board book presentation, the first part, that the, the DLA one, yes. I think it's like page 25. It looks almost like a spreadsheet. It goes gray and white, gray and white. It says life safety code issues, and it says 6.9, oh, right. okay. 13,700. Yeah, so and then underneath that is listed all the big ticket oh, items so on the next couple pages of how what, how they're broken out. So those those are those are the listings there. Right. So I mean, like on the second on page, then twenty six halfway down, you'll see six hundred thousand. It says bleachers well beyond their useful life and post safety. Risk. So it's she's projecting six hundred thousand just for the bleachers. Okay. It breaks down how she got six point nine million. Yes, the, the entire life safety report was submitted. I, I can't speak right. to how it's put in, in the board packet. But I can speak to the next question that you asked, which was the project um, a little bit more on the facility assessment side and how that's broken down. And if you look at the second report summary after that spreadsheet, after this sheet in your in your packet, uh, would be the very next page. And it'll, it'll say uh, cost by project type. And they're broken down into headings like ceiling, flooring, um, uh, life safety, and electrical, and mechanical, and plumbing, and so forth. And then it gives you tallies of all of those, and then it shows line items beneath them. So just to give you a, a, a better handle on all of the other the other items up for the facility assessment, that detail is in that in that packet that you received. Yeah, I see it's all alphabetical. But I, I want to know, like, how do I? O and M versus capital on those, right? They're they're not um, some some O and M for like there would be sometimes there would be a ceiling that's an O and M and sometimes there's a ceiling in life safety it depends on the thing but those are just broken down by the the project type, so okay. But what you will have at a later date in further detail would be the entire spreadsheet which says every location every um, uh, square footage that calculation and the associated cost estimate, those 1,000 items uh, that Joel has on his computer currently. So One of the things that the, the Facilities Council and myself thought were, was helpful, like even in the summary carry provided in your packet, was when we were breaking down the $66 million project, you know, um, you know, concrete or paving was all lumped into one number and we didn't know so what she's done is, you know, on, I'm looking at one page like 31. She has painting, 292,000, and then and then she lists all the different items and what the projection is for the painting for that, how that makes up the 292. So it just gives you an idea of how this came to be. It might not cost 292 if Joel and his staff can do it all. So that's why I'm saying this number is really a living number because it's going to change. Right. And so my question would be of the painting. How do I know if it's in the capital improvement number or the O and M number? Because you see the whole report. Right. Okay. And, and if that's the answer, that's fine. I'm just asking of what we got. It's available. The answer is we can't tell. Well, we can't from here because the idea was to get your wet your appetite. Well, that's okay. Give you the high level. You know, if that's the answer, that's the answer that okay. I can't tell of these costs except for the 6.9. I can't tell which one of those numbers they're in. Right. Right. That's that's okay, but if that's the answer. But um, Kevin, did you hear Laura's question? I did not. Laura, maybe you should ask again. I was because there was a point that the, this board made to post all the other documents. I was just asking if you were going to attempt to post that also. Is it a public document? I don't know if it's a public document. Yeah. I, well, what I would say right now is what we would want to do is board has their first read. We do a, uh, the public facilities committee so that's open to the public and to the entire board and we're going to try in that time Mike Connors and I are going to work to try to FTP this to kind of to the same site where we have a link with the other old construction documents because it would not currently fit on our current website so there's a little <laughs> thing we have to do behind the scenes to make this public because it's like I said a, it's enormous it's almost 500 pages but we, yes it will eventually will be a public document that someone could click on okay so and the board will definitely you, uh, get it post it when we post documents we post many training manuals um, and so does the government national Guard. they tend to post them in sections 
and then whoever reads it you could print out a section and the sections are smaller they're easy to handle they download quickly as opposed to posting a 500 page book yeah I think that question is probably going right over Carrie to Mike sitting in the back yeah so Mike <laughs> yeah. yeah so they just post a series of sections okay I, I have a couple questions regarding this has there been some zoning changes done because I'm looking like interior exit staircase stairwells don't have proper fire rated doors is this a situation where zoning's changed since our construction has happened or did our construction not properly put in these types of things I don't think that those doors were addressed in that construction so these are the old existing area not the new area right. so all the new area has the proper so none of this cost is in a new area the only thing that is in the was done that I I can think of that may overlap would be some of the rooms were not sprinkled areas under stairs a couple little spaces that were not sprinkled and I don't know if that was not on the documents or if it was just a, a contractor did not execute that or I, I have no idea of the scope of work and I can't speak to that but I, I do know that that is on there so you would see something like that and I'm not sure of the definitive line of every single new um, piece of work that has been in the, the building, but for the most part, the life safety fire ratings did uh, involve the existing, you know, older looking pieces. Of this came up a couple of years ago, though, and there was some with the Riverside Fire Department or something that either the school code or the fire code did change because they wanted us to change something on the doors, right? The that they had approved. Joel can answer that. It was a, the hold opens. Yeah, the, the hold open. Um, and they had approved the design and the built occupancy after the construction, and they said later on we had to take them off or put them on or whatever we had right. to do to them. Ultimately, in the, in the case of that one, yeah. um, you know, I, I know I went to Riverside Fire Department about it, and, and they certainly have their recommendation, and, um, but in, in matters like that, it's West 40 that ends up being the one that, that remember that says that in, I remember the door, but I'm, I'm looking at something called unsealed water wall penetrations to fire barrier comprises the fire separation. And, you know, I don't know if that's new piping that was put in and they didn't properly is sealed. Is it the wall itself? The fire caulk, and we have a fire couple caulk that they not properly fire caulk. A couple areas that were not, not fire caulk. There's a, one or two areas where there was walls erected and then there's piping in mechanicals that go over the top and they needed to complete the wall that needs to be completed yeah. some of those 80 grand it would have been done should have been done during our construction I don't know I'm just okay okay Gary you any more on your uh, what to speak to Gary I mean we don't want to throw <laughs> so are those comments meant to try and throw somebody under the bus I mean all the construction is also inspected we have inspectors come in I mean let's ask Joel is it possible in a 63 million dollar renovation to miss a caulking a pipe because certainly we've had in inspectors come through. We had excellent uh, architects. We had excellent engineers. We've got a lovely building. Is it possible to miss a pipe? Yeah, I suppose, sure. Um, How I, did the I inspectors miss it? Is that possible in a $63 million inspection? Um, I wouldn't say sure. Gary's Depends on who's doing the inspecting, I guess. 80 grand is not one pipe. No, it's not. So, you know, I, I, I'm just asking the questions, okay? And again, I really can't speak to the scope of work in detail that was established. It's just what I saw All right, I mean, you're, to date. I, right. it, it doesn't, you know, it could have been an existing condition that wasn't addressed. So that it's... All right. Okay, I'm just, so what's, what do you have next on your agenda? Just, I just wanted to point out what's next, and that is, again, the, the goal here would be to, at some point in time in the not-too-distant future, to approve the life safety survey so you, we could submit it to the state of Illinois. Um, and then the work to prioritize the next capital improvements that you would want to do in conjunction with the life safety in the future and develop a matching budget to accommodate that plan, and then we would help you uh, come up with a phased implementation program for this work. Carrie, is it possible for you to email us this PowerPoint? Sure. And then, Carrie, I got one other question. When you submit it to the state, how long does it take to do it? Usually about three months. Okay. That's a comfortable number. And then when you're doing this phase implementation and working with us on prioritizing, you will then give us options and say, 
if you do all of this at once, this is the same as you would do if you do it piecemeal. Will yeah. you do that? We would work to, yes, to work with you with your priorities and what you would like to accomplish over the course of the immediate future and develop some synergies with the construction types, yes. All right, so this uh, encapsulates everything. We are looking for a more detailed report at a public hearing where you will be there in the facility, uh, Tim and John will chair to be able to go over it a little bit more detail, all right? Yeah, not a public hearing, no, a public committee. Public committee hearing, okay. One Any? quick question, does the one year begin to run from the date the state approves? That's correct. So what, it, following up on Matt, one thing that we su suggested, Kevin was uh, saying, why don't we try to pick a date for the committee, but we wanted to make sure that we got dates when all the board members were available. I got, what I have Marion doing first is emailing Carrie, trying to get Mondays or Tuesdays like we used to do for the bargaining and or weeks we don't have board meetings and trying to keep it at a similar time. Okay. And I'm trying to shoot for somewhere in November so that if we could have this public committee meeting, the facilities council, if it needed to get together, tweak something, and we would try to approve the life safety at the board meeting in December. Okay. So that would give them January, February, March, right around we're starting to do budget and stuff. We would start doing phasing planning. So, so the public isn't left hanging. The $69,000 priority A, could you give a general concept of what those items are? The priority A items are six, the 65000 65000 What is, are they? Is, uh, basically anything to do with egress. So if a door sticks, if there's a tripping hazard, if there's anything associated with impeding egress, that is a, a that's in there. That's, that's, prim a, that's a primary issues related yeah. to the 65. Mm -hmm. Joel, is that stuff that we can tweak with or, or, or address? Yeah, some of internally. The, a lot of the of the category ones. Um, category we, A's. Let's do the A's. I'm sorry, the A's. Uh, 57 that are life safety. Um, th that were in. 57 of those items are in our our uh, work, work order. Okay. So Are we there any questions for Carrie? So the, I, I, not a question, but to kind of wrap, follow up with the intent is then we'll, we'll pick a date, we'll to notice a public meeting, and we will make the document available to the board and to the public prior to the meeting for anybody who wants to read it. It's good reading. And, uh, and then so the public and more particularly the board have the opportunity to go in detail and you know like the kinds of information Mike asked about he'll have a chance to look at it ahead of time and ask Carrie whatever and Joel whatever questions they have and then go so the life safety would completely covered so we could you know approve it at the board meeting hopefully and then more of a kind of begin the planning of how we're going to present a phased approach in, in what items would be in what priority to do the whole, uh, to look at the, the, the whole realm or population of all the suggestions that are in there. Correct. Right, Kevin? Correct. That's a good summary. The, uh, I, I would encourage the board, once we identify a date, uh, for you to attend. If you can't attend, I would say between what's in that binder and the summary that Carrie put together with you. This is a really good snapshot of, of those projects. It breaks down mechanical, life safety, capital, O&M. Um, so the summary, she did a good, some good work to help get a better handle of the larger document when you see the larger document. Thank you, Kerry. Thank you, Joel. Joel, before you leave, yes. while the department chair starts stretching in the back and get ready to present with Kristen and doing her jumping jacks and uh, pool update yeah. while we have you here. Pardon me? The update on the pool. Can you put yes. one? Yes. Um, we've had some uh, problems with the pool here. Um, not uncommon. Uh, and uh, they were with uh, control components uh, for the unit that's uh, up on the roof. Um, it's independent of the of the work that that's you know uh, we uh, that's in the agreement that's coming up uh, here shortly. Um, and. Um, uh, we, we replaced one of the, the, the main controlling components there, one of the boards on there. Um, and then now some of the, we've had one of the downstream uh, sort of subboards uh, uh, fail tonight. It's, it's you know, the, the space is, is fine and it's, it's, you know, very comfortable in there and they're getting plenty of, you know, of, of uh, outside air in that. 
So it's it's not a, an immediate concern, but just kind of where we're at right now with it. What's okay. the, what is the timing on the work that White's leading in here doing there? Um, yeah, I've been working with um, with White, with uh, Terry Moeller from White, and he's um, we're kind of there's two two pieces of work, one that they're um, uh, responsible for, and one that 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 uh, uh, we are through Soresco, right? Yeah. And uh, and I've been talking to Soresco, and we're we're coordinating that. You know, I think the the timeline is looking as the sooner the better. Um, certainly, we want to do it in as much as possible to as little interruption to that because it's a you know it's a busy pool. So um, uh, so we don't want to interrupt their. But will it be before? Like the girls are hosting the conference this year, right? Yeah. So will it be before or after? It'll, it'll be after that. Okay. Likely after that. End of November, early December. Right. They need three or four weeks to fabricate fabricate the new duct work. Okay. Right. Some of that. Yeah, there's some lead time on some of the components and stuff like that, and just sort of lining up to contractors. Just keep us uh, posted as it goes. So. Yeah, you bet. If I ever you win bet. the lottery, I'm going to retire and become a pool guy. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've spent more time in the last three years in that pool. I know. <laughs> I would like to be Kerry's assistant. So I think yeah. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Kerry. Thank you very much, Joel. Thank you very much.